In this video, I'll show you how to make a choropleth map using ArcMap. GIS has made choropleth maps really easy to make, perhaps too easy to make, so they become very prolific. Nonetheless, they can be an effective way to represent quantitative data across a surface so long as they're used thoughtfully. So to start with, I've got some data here for counties in the US, and if I open up the attribute table for this layer, you can see that there's a lot of different variables associated with this. We've got information about population, different races and ethnicities, ages, gender, etc. within each of these census units. So we're going to use some of that data in order to make our choropleth map. To start with, all we need to do is go to the Symbology tab of the properties for that layer, and then go to Quantities, and look for graduated colors. It's the first one there. We can just choose a value that we'd like to use in order to make our graduated colors. So for the sake of this example, let's look at the Hispanic population that's in each of these counties. So if I select Hispanic for the value, and then hit OK, we get a choropleth map, but the information in this Hispanic field is just a raw count of the number of people in each one of these counties that identified themselves as Hispanic in the 2000 census. And so, understandably, we're going to get the highest population, the most saturated colors, in the areas where there are a lot of people. So, for instance, in Chicago, Miami, and around Los Angeles. This isn't doing us a lot of good in terms of comparing the urban and rural, and perhaps there are a lot of rural counties out here where there's a fairly high percentage of Hispanic population, but there just is a very low overall population. And so choropleth maps are generally used to show rate information rather than raw counts. Proportional symbol and dot maps are usually used to show raw counts. So in order to use a choropleth map properly, we've got to convert this raw count into a rate, and it's actually really easy to do that just by using a normalization factor. So in the second drop down here, if we select population 2000, it's going to normalize the number of people that identified as Hispanic by the total number of people within each of those counties. And if we hit apply again, we get a very different type of map where we see that there's a rather large percentage of Hispanic population within a lot of these southwestern counties, even though there isn't a large population overall. Other options we have going on here in our graduated colors dialog are to change the way that we classify the breaks between our colors. So we can change the number of classes, and you can get up to 32 classes, although I would suggest that you stay somewhere between 5 and 8, just because the more classes you get, the harder it is to differentiate between the classes, and the less meaningful the class breaks become. So we'll stick with 5 for the time being. You can also classify these with different methods. So right now I'm using a natural breaks method using this Jenks algorithm and ArcMap is automatically going to decide where there seems to be a natural break between one section of my data and another. Now this is a pretty continuous sort of logarithmic looking curve here. There isn't a really clear definition between different sections of our data, but in some data there really is. There might be sort of a group of data here and another group there, and it's very easy to say we should put a break between those two groups. We could also use a manual method where we can come in here and assign each of these break values by hand. We could use an equal interval method where it will just distribute those breaks along the range of our data in equal intervals. We could use a defined interval where we set the interval size and it automatically distributes those according to that size that we've set. We could use quantiles, and this is a really handy distribution method because it puts the same number of units, so in this case the same number of counties, within each one of the classes. So you can see that since there are a lot of counties that have fairly low Hispanic populations, the classes are sort of all clustered up against the low end of our range here. If I was to hit OK and then apply, Ideally, you would see that there are the same number of counties or the same amount of area on the map uh, covered by each color within our classification scheme. Now, that's not true here because counties are different sizes, and somewhat inconveniently, a lot of the counties that have a, a large Hispanic population are also really large counties. So they dominate the map, and there's somewhat of an imbalance between the high saturation areas over here and the low saturation areas, which are in relatively small counties towards the northeast. We can also use a geometric interval, which will distribute our breaks based on a geometric curve. Or we could use a standard deviation, which will distribute our breaks by calculating the mean of our data set and then placing breaks based on the standard deviations on either side of that mean. So I'm going to set it back to quantiles. Okay. And as I said before, this is really an imperfect way of mapping this data just because this map is so heavy on the high saturation side. Just because this map is so heavy on the high saturation side, it doesn't feel like a well-balanced color scheme. And in fact, what we probably would want is some blend between the natural breaks 
and those quantiles. This is leaning in the other direction where most of the map surface is covered by these fairly low saturation hues. But at the same time, we get a better sense for the gradient that moves in this direction of large Hispanic population down to the south that gets smaller and smaller as we get up north. So in the end, you'd probably want to do some manual tweaks to this classification scheme, and you'd want to make sure that these ranges were meaningful to your audience. So unless this 8 hundredths of a percent to roughly 6 percent break is going to be meaningful somehow to your audience, you might want to round those off so that these ranges were between, say, 0 and 5 percent, and then 5 percent to 20 percent, just so you have nice round numbers. Or perhaps you can even use ranges that are meaningful somehow to your discussion. The other thing that you can change here is the color ramp, so you can see there are a variety of different colors that you can use. There are color ramps that go between low saturation and high saturation of the same hue, and that type of color ramp is most appropriate for this data, where all we're showing is low density and high density of the same variable. If we were mapping something that was polar, so say we were mapping a gradient between high density of one thing and high density of another thing, then we might want to use one of these polarized color schemes, like this one for instance, where we would be showing a high density of one there and a high density of the other there with sort of a mix in between. But that's not really appropriate for this data. I'm going to go back to that original gradient between high density and low density of the same variable.